As I say, there were small groups of humans in a cave in, in South Africa for, the, for about 100,000 years. And in our society right now, people are saying, oh, you can't ask, what is a woman? The modern hominids, homo sapiens, homo sapiens have been around, I mean, Neanderthals have been around for at least maybe 300,000 years to 30,000 years ago. Homo sapiens, which is our species, if you want to call it that, evolved, you know, less than 100,000 years ago in Africa mm. and um, and coexisted with, with the Neanderthals. And probably one of the, one of the plausible ar arguments is that we, if we coexisted, first of all, we coexisted enough to mate with them. We all have Neanderthal DNA in our, in our thing. But it's also possible we, that modern Homo sapiens were responsible for uh, killing them, okay, for eventually, Kill. eventually making Neanderthals extinct. It could have happened one of two ways. It could have happened by violent encounters, or it could have happened just simply by out competition. That as mm. climate change, Neanderthals couldn't adapt adequately, and Homo sapiens did. You know, it's called natural selection. Most species that have ever been on Earth are extinct. Yeah. And, and that's why to assume we won't become extinct is kind of a pompous assumption. Because certainly, I mean, we're, we have this great, amazing ability called foresight, which in principle would allow us to survive. But if you look around today and see what's happening, it's sort of, you, it may be doubtful. Yeah. And we'll see. It depends on the day, whether what, what I think about that. But so, so most species are become extinct, and, and, and it doesn't so... To think that we're the capstone of evolution is kind of a pompous assumption. Mm. With humanity going back that far, though, in so many cataclysmic type events that have occurred since, do you are you someone who ever thinks about what kind of maybe technological breakthroughs could have happened in previous civilizations that we don't know about now? No. <laughs> Never? Well, there are things that, look... Early civilizations were some of them were quite good. The Greeks were knew this, the Greeks knew the circumference of the Earth, and which was then forgotten until we well, measured that's against this era, though. Well, the, what, what, Even though it's an early civilization, it's during what, this era of humanity. Well, there weren't, yeah, but there were no it's civilizations that had language and writing and technology before much before the Greeks. A modern civilization, really? maybe ten thousand years, goes back ten thousand years. Mm. But before that, humans were in small tribes, and before that, you know, even not hominids. As I say, there were small groups of humans in a cave in in South Africa for the, for about a hundred thousand years. During which, by the way, climate change caused the sea to come in and out by a factor of maybe 10 miles. So during that time, some of that time, they were fishing, getting high protein, probably during that time. For 100,000 years. Yeah, during that in time. An instant. <laughs> yeah, during that time, probably when they had high protein diets is when their brain increased in size, allowing, mm. allowing um, you know, so all sorts of factors came into our evolution that are important. But, um, but there were no, there's no <laughs> ancient civilizations before, before that, that had, uh, there's no evidence whatsoever or any plausible argument for why any ancient civilized these arguments that like ancient aliens and stuff is just bogus. So Lawrence Krauss isn't sitting around thinking about the lost city of Atlantis too much. No, no, I'm not. Not in terms of I mean there are there are probably there are cataclysmic events that probably cause uh, islands to disappear under the water and 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 that can happen. That can certainly arise by volcanic events. But there didn't hide some civilization that knew how to have flying cars or or uh, or be so cool. Or, That'd be so much fun. Of course, that's right. But we have to realize we all want to believe. We're like Fox right. Muldar. That's right. We're, and and we have to. And so, like Richard Feynman said, the easiest person to fool is yourself. And so you yes. got to constantly recognize that we all want to believe. And 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 then we have to say, well, what do we want to believe in? And maybe if we believe in it, there's a reason. We want to believe in it. Maybe it's not right. Maybe it's but, not true. But you also, it, it does work both ways, too. I agree with you 100%. Like well, when you I, have to because I'm right. When, <laughs> <laughs> when I look at so many people these days and, you know, all these stories are interesting. And, yes, I look into them, too. And there's a part of me that wants to believe all this stuff, whether it be looking at ancient civilizations, some of the UFO stuff, whatever. But in science, what was that line you had a little bit ago where you said – Science isn't about proving something; it's about proving something that's not. You can't. You can't prove things to be right in science. You can right. prove. You can prove things to be wrong. Absolutely. Okay. But just because so, something survives the test of experiment now doesn't mean it's absolutely right. There could be an experiment that comes along that shows you have to modify your theory. Exactly. So, so if if you are looking, for example, in your in some of your life's work, where you are looking all the way to the end of the spectrum. And what I mean by that is to where it's either nothing or it's God, creator, whatever. You fill in the word there. And you're saying that that 
doesn't exist. Isn't that the toughest thing to even make that decision on? And and are you open to being wrong about that? I'm open to be wrong about everything. All right, that's good. That's the whole point of being, being a scientist. And all of us should be. Being wrong is a wonderful thing. It means you have something else to learn. And I've been wrong many times in my life. Well, I was wrong once, I think, 20 <laughs> years ago. And, 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 and you know what? And I remember I was wrong because I thought I was wrong. What were you wrong about? <laughs> no, I was, thought I was wrong. I was, I was wrong about uh. it. No, that's just a joke. I've been wrong many times in my life. And, and the older I get, the more I realize that. And so that's fine. There's nothing. But, but, what, what I under, but what I'm willing, the difference between science and religion is that you're willing to change your mind <laughs> mm. when the evidence tells you to. Do you think so, science can turn into religion, though, too? Well, science... Look, we're all religious in one way or another. We mm. all want to believe. Yes. The, science, the usefulness of science is it trains us, if it does right, to be willing to realize that if the evidence, if contrary evidence comes along, then you throw out some beautiful idea that you believed in your heart of hearts, like yesterday's newspaper. You're willing to do that. And I think that's the difference between science and religion, and not science and ideology. And unfortunately, there's too much. There's a lot of ideology creeping into science yes. nowadays, and I've written about it, as you probably know. And and um, and so the idea that so, nothing is there's nothing that should be not subject to question. Nothing is sacred. Mm. No, no question is unaskable. And in our society right now, people are saying, "Oh, you can't ask what is a woman," you know. <laughs> And and uh, and and anything should be questionable. Nothing is sacred. Nothing. And and that you know, I used to argue uh, against religious fundamentalists about this now, but now I have to argue against uh, uh, social justice postmodernist oh, yeah. ideologues. And so, see, that's you, it's always asked. Me. It's yeah, it's always reasonable to say, but what could that be wrong? So that's why we get back to what I said earlier. I don't know is so important, and you 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 said it. It's not just in science. It'd be we our society would be so much better if more people said I don't know, politicians, teachers, parents, yes. and maybe I'm wrong. The reason no, I think people right don't want that. something to come onto the university campuses that fear might offend them. But you know what? The, the free speech is not was not created so that to defend the rights of people who are saying what what you don't want to hear. It defends your rights to hear it because it might change your mind. Ooh, I don't think I've ever heard that. Well, before. I first learned that from Christopher Hitchens, but he he he, that's he good. But he didn't invent that either. It was probably Hume or someone like Still, that. Still, that's really or, good. Or, yeah, yeah. No, it is. It's really important. Yeah, because you. Be I mean, you've spent so much of your life around academia, and I'm sure the the transformation that you've seen there, particularly over the last decade or so, has to be pretty jarring. No, it, it is. It's jarring and unfortunate, and I write about it, and it's it's really unfortunate. In fact, I have a piece coming out. This week, maybe in the Wall Street Journal, um, if they ever get around to editing the damn thing, <laughs> uh, that, uh, uh, you know, there was, before you were born again, probably, there was a guy named Alan Sokol who uh, gave a spoof. He he was so, he thought this postmodernist nonsense that was infiltrating humanities was so bad. He wrote an article claiming that quantum gravity, you know, it, it, it was a, he sent it to a journal called Social Choice, which was one of these postmodernist journals that eventually became this, you know, social justice nonsense we're hearing now. And it was full of gobbledygook, gobbledygook about oppression and this and that. <laughs> and and he got it published. And then he pointed out later it was a spoof and it caused a great furor because mm. this distinguished journal in, so, in, in social sciences that accepted this nonsense, he wanted to show that the, that the whole field had no content. And what my piece in, in, the, in, in the Wall Street Journal shows that, unfortunately, the same gobbledygook that was a spoof then is appearing now, not just oh, in yeah. social science journals, but in science journals. Yeah. And it's, it, it, would never, it would have been laughed off the... It, scientists would have just ridiculed that crap now, and now it's appearing in journals and institutions are accepting that nonsense. So yeah, I, it's pretty I, scary. You're in town right now to do an event with Nick Pope, who yeah. we just recorded with as well. Yeah. So I, your episodes are going to be coming out around the same time. But I'm going to be recording an episode with his wife, Elizabeth. Yes, who I've written in, about. Yeah, in a couple of weeks because of that whole... I mean, she's an anthropologist who, when looking at some found remains, declared it to be, I believe it was female. Yeah. And then she was canceled because they're like, well, I, you don't know how that remain would have identified. Yeah, when they yeah, were, yeah, I know. You're not allowed like, to use sex when it comes to... Are you kidding me? Yeah, I know. Exactly. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I wrote a piece on the sex of skeletons in, in, uh, based on her, on the fact that that was canceled from a from a meeting on the American Anthropological Nuts. Association. It's just utter 
garbage. And it, well, the problem is it's the biggest threat to science because saying that you can't ask the question or can't even discuss certain things is the end of science. Yeah, I think it's that's that's what I mean because obviously, as you pointed out, there are plenty of scientists who are still in the space who are not treating science like a religion, like an ide like an yeah. ideology. But it is creeping in even from the outside forces so much yeah. that we're getting to a point where that is the ultimate hack against religion throughout human history in that they're like, well, this is how it is because this is what it says and you can't ask any questions about it. 